Amazing theme tune. It's pretty damn good. Pretty, I pretty mean, that singer, that singer is, oof. He reminds me of a young Tom Jones. With more talent. And that is saying something. I mean, if you don't realise, that is me singing that. No. Yes. I would have mistaken that voice for any of them. An are. old Tom Jones. <laughs> and I uh, wrote it. And played it as well with the guitars. It sounded very much like a middle-aged Tom Jones song. <laughs> but all all jokes aside, I'm gonna get a better singer. Yeah, I, we, we yeah, should because yeah, you know I'm terrible for now. It's a uh, wonderful, wonderful. Who doesn't want to take a ride with Tony the Pony? I mean, Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very dirty, doesn't very. it? Very. <laughs> Anyway, hello and welcome to Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour, the show where we talk big pineapples, small pineapples, hairy pineapples, and everything in between. I am your host, Tony the Pony, and with me, as always, is the one and only, the incredible. Everyone put your hands together for Mr. Pineapple. Hello there. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Pineapple? Well, it's been a long day, hasn't it? It has. It's been a long, arduous day. Are we, are we going to tell them? Technical difficulties abound. House full of wood. House full of wood. You never want a house full of wood. <laughs> <You know. laughs> but yeah, uh, we had a bit of technical difficulties this morning. We are now recording this at 6 o'clock in the evening. We started recording earlier on today at 10? 10? 10-ish, yeah, around 10. Recorded an hour of the podcast and realised I fucked it all up. It was just choppy and cutting each other out all the time, so we're going to do it again for you. It's a good thing I had the hangover this morning to need the toilet. Yeah, because we would have recorded the whole podcast and... Yeah. Yeah. Motherfucker. Alcohol is good for some things, kids. Uh, our big pineapple today, though, is, like we mentioned last week... Where we will be reviewing each other's films. Favourite, Favourite films. films. Yes. Not, we didn't star in films. <laughs> um, your favourite film? Police Story, Jackie Chan, 1985. My favourite film? Michael Keaton, the film. Birdman. Birdman, in brackets, or the something, something, something. The ignorance thing. Yeah. By Alejandro. Yeah, Mexican man. Definitely not Mexican. But he's Mexican. Is he? Yeah. I thought he was Spanish. No. He is Mexican. Favourite film. My favourite film that is. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> but before we get to that, we've got some small little teeny tiny news. Pineapple news. There was a lot this week as we said this morning yeah and we managed to whittle it down to what we thought were the sort of the more pressing bigger issues yeah the ones people are going to be more interested in i mean and a few where we're like we're interested in them so we're getting we're getting spoke about nobody cares about the secret garden second trailer drop in no no one's gonna go and watch it you know it's like it's like narnia but not narnia Earth's in it too. Yeah. Looking weird. Mumbling bastard. Yeah. Yeah, we're very aggressive. So yeah, we'll talk we'll talk trailers first and then we've got the news segging me on. So trailers, first trailer. We've got amazing stories. Yes. Spielberg. Yes, that's the one. I couldn't remember it this morning, so I'm not gonna remember it. No. No. <laughs> so uh, yeah, essentially uh Spielberg's reboot in a, a show that he sort of Produced in the 80s, which ran for two seasons before it got cancelled. Did you watch it? I've seen bits and pieces. Any good? Not too bad. Yeah. But you said that was so like An anthology. anthology. It's like every yeah. episode is either like one like 30 minute story or like a couple of segments, you know? Yeah. But 
but this looks more yeah, like it's an overarching yeah. story now. It doesn't seem to be multiple. It just looked a bit confusing. Yeah, especially when it's called Amazing Stories. You'd think maybe if it's just not, one maybe story... They're not, maybe then... they're not connected. No, but they did look connected. Yeah. Unless they're doing the thing where they use the same actors, but in different roles. Maybe. Probably. That's what we like to do. I mean, it. I can't see it taking off. No. And it's on Apple Plus. There we go. Don't really matter. No one's going to watch it because they don't want to subscribe to Apple Plus because yeah. there's too many streaming networks now. I Jesus. Mean, fuck Apple. Yeah. I've got my phone, but... I'll, fuck you. Get, my least favorite company on the planet. Well, Steve Jobs and that. Fuck Steve Jobs. Are you dead? Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> Tokyo Godfathers. Yes, this one uh, was quite surprised. To be fair, um, we we caught like a compilation, didn't we, last night of mm. uh, some of the new trailers that have been released, and this was sort of tacked on at the end. You I seem was, very confused. Yeah, because I know this film uh, quite well. And when was it released? Two thousand and three. And it's now twenty twenty. <laughs> uh, but but it's uh, it's getting a, a English dub. For the yeah. very first time, a re-release. So uh, that's why it was on there. Yeah, only in America at the minute, but we can hold out hope that we get it sort of over in this market too. See, when I watched your reaction to it last night, I thought it was some kind of time travel. They like to re-release everything. Yeah, the way the trailer was in subtitles, mm. which was peculiar. When it's a dubbed, yeah, re-release. So I don't know what's going on there. But if it gets a release over it, I'm sure we'll keep you in, informed. Maybe you are just a time traveller. I've often thought that I have skills. Not just in the bedroom or the kitchen. Because that's where I mostly do my time travel. Uh. Bedrooms and kitchens. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, kind of segueing, racist segue here. Because, you know... There's a Kung Fu trailer out in Tokyo, and Kung Fu obviously mixed, because they're both Asian things. <laughs> yeah, but enter the Fat Dragon. Enter the, the Fat Dragon. You know, Donnie Yen's latest uh, action flick. More action comedy from the trailer. Yeah. Um, fat suit Donnie Yen. Because... Yuma from the 20 years ago region. Yeah, because uh, they want to... Um, Fat shame, everyone. Yep, it, obesity is funny. Apparently, yes. apparently so. But he's still flying about, kicking the crap out of thugs and baddies, etc. Mm. You know, will there be a love angle in the film? I don't know. <laughs> I was quite drunk when I watched it. Well, yeah, it looks... The fat suit looks... I, fe I felt round the cheats it looked a bit animated. Yeah, it, it looks a bit off. Mm. Like when you said it with Donnie M, I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So it... In a way, they've done a good job because it don't look like Donnie Yen. But I'm going to watch the shit out of it. Oh, yeah. Kung Fu. I love that. Bollocks. And you said they stole the... Um... Yeah, there's already um, a film called Enter the Fat Dragon from the 70s with Sammo Hong, another martial arts hero of mine. Um, Who is he... actually fat. He's a, he's a rotund man, yes. Yeah. He's portly. The best Kung Fu you will ever see on screen. Any screen, silver screen, big screen, and that is uh, the new Power Rangers. What's the matter, Mr. Pineapple? We talked about this earlier and it angered me then. <laughs> <laughs> so, having to just re-talk about it, it's just, it's just flashbacks I don't need. It's like Nam. Vietnam. Yes. <laughs> it looks rubbish. It looks awful. It's just like the Disney sitcom of... Power Rangers series, the, the production design looks atrocious. I mean, it's never been amazing, but well, this well, just looks... I mean, just... I will have no bad words said about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. See, Mighty Morphin kind of took you into that world and you kind of believed it, even though you could, like, tell all the outfits and stuff were just... Well, it's not real. Yeah, I know, but they, they didn't look good, did they? But yeah. you'd think... <laughs> Right, listen, you'd think, what, how many years after? Well, when we're 93. That was like 20 years ago. 27 years ago. I should know I was born that year. <laughs> <laughs> 27 years 
and they'd actually look better. Just a little bit better. But now they look worse. It just looks bad. It looks very, very bad. And I'm going to watch it because I hate myself. <laughs> yeah. Enough about Power Rangers. It's... It just looks atrocious. It just drains you it, to watch. It made me sad. Cause and you put it on on purpose last night. Because oh yeah. Would anger me. <laughs> because you're a nasty, nasty man. Well, it it looks like they actually transform into the dinosaurs, dinosaurs yeah. themselves, and they just no. <laughs> just yes. stop. Yeah. They've got too many Power Rangers TV shows. Just carry on with Mighty Morphin. Was that finished in like ninety five? C- c- carry it on. No. No one's going to complain if they reboot a really fan fav- favourite franchise. I would, I'd pay money for that. <laughs> it always goes well. I'd pay good money for that. <laughs> 15, I'd give £15 towards that project. 15 15 Because mm-hmm. I've not made a cash. I'm going to give £15 10p. I'll allow it. Fair enough. Because the project gets made. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, the next one. Yeah, this is quite a sort of left field. Yeah. Um, Good old Harry Potter. Danielle. (laughs) Danielle. Danielle. (laughs) (laughs) Daniel Radcliffe. um, Escaping a prison. A South South African prison. Not Azkaban. A 1978 South African prison. Based on true events. South African prison in 1978. No, you had a... A problem with based on true events, didn't you? Yeah, I just don't like the phrase. No. Because it's just... Mostly the film's bullshit, but then there'll be that one thing that happened. Inspired by is a phrase that I prefer. Yeah. Oh, you prefer? Yeah. Because then it knows that it's... Yeah, it's not kind of bigging itself up. It's not lying to me. And I don't like being lied to. Okay. (laughs) Are you going to hunt Danielle down? No, I'm going to hunt the producers down. Fair enough. Let Put them Daniel in a South just... African prison in 1978. See how they like it. Yeah, based on true events, bitch. But yeah, it looks it looks good. It looks really good. It looks cool. The reason I wanted to talk about it is because it actually looks different from every other Escape from Prison film. Like, it looks like the incorporate... Uh, different methods of getting yeah, out of prison that you've not seen some, before. Some zany ways of uh, escaping. <laughs> and just, I'm really intrigued by the camera work in the trailer. I think it did show you a bit too it much. It went on a little bit. It was Fast and Furious 9 levels. Yeah. Long. Yeah, they probably shouldn't have done that because there's a point in the trailer where you think that's going to be the main thing way that they get out and you just don't want that you know yeah. are we gonna do it film i mean a prob- it looks interesting i will watch it probably probably not the pictures but no nah. it looks pretty interesting as a film and the last trailer is a show that's loved by many a show that we have not seen <laughs> yes but we're gonna talk about it anyway because it's got the one and only aaron paul Famously famous for Bojack the Horseman. And meth dealing, cooking, meth. distributing. Yeah. Um, and taking. Advertising. Um, he, he did the catering as well. And um, He killed a fly. Yeah, he did the theme tune. Did the theme tune, wrote the theme tune. Um, like you. Like me, yeah. But he was more accomplished. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Westworld. Westworld season three. Cowboy robots, Pang Bang aren't actually in this season, so I don't know why I'm saying that. Ed Harris is in it though. Ed Harris Looking plays old. the, what's his character called? I don't know, I, I just know he's a man in black. I don't man know in that's black. his actual yeah, name. Yeah, that's his character's name. Right. Yeah, people listening to this will probably be like, that happens in the first episode, why are you talking about that? But that's all I've seen. And this season is not in Wild Wild West, Desperado. It's in Future World or outside of the Westworld facility world. We are unsure. We are very unsure because, again, we have not watched this TV show. 
and we probably never will. No, but it looks all right. It does look good. Yeah. It looks well made. Aaron Paul looks like he's got his very dramatic, tensing cheeks getting angry, as well as his funny side. He's like a little... He's pretty decent at the comedy stuff. Yeah, he's a little, a little chirper, isn't he? Yeah. First season had Anthony Hopkins in. Yeah, it did. He played the guy. Mm, now he's a pope. Yes. Pope Anthony Hopkins. Yes, he is. <laughs> anyway, that's that's all for the uh, the trailers. We were more infused about them this morning. We were. <laughs> Apologies. But on to the news now. We've got to get pumped for this news because this news section has got a lot of news in. There is many, many items. To and there was many, many more items, but we just yeah, couldn't. We had to whittle it down. We because, couldn't do it all. Yeah. Right, first news. Same as last week. B -b 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 Batman. Yes, we got some set photos. We did. That shows a better look at his uh, bat suit. Yes. I mean, minus the cape because he's on a motorbike. Which is a big issue for you that you've been talking about for the past day and a half. Yeah. Because I want to see his full costume. We'll pay to watch the film when it's out then. No, I will stream it. Up. No. Um, it looks alright. I like the look of it. It's very tactical. I thought it was going to be more comic orientated, but it looks like a more mechanised version it is of new. Christine Bales, I'd say. It's quite bulky looking. Yeah. In places. It's like, no, it's like the Arkham games. Arkham Knight, when he has the uh, mechanical chest plate. I still haven't seen that played Arkham Knight. Oh. Uh, I only played um, Asylum and City. Well, you're disappointed. I own it though. <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying, they keep going on about his bloody bat symbol being the gun that killed his parents. Oh. I don't like it. If that's it, I'm going to scream. Yeah, I don't like parents. And we don't need to see it. We don't even need anything to do with it. Yeah, because it's been done. It's been done countless times in yeah. all, all forms of media spider-man did spider-man without uncle ben why can't batman do was, batman I without really parents that they did that. yeah it's like you've not seen joker have you no it's in that as well is it really yeah jesus wept then they just kind of shove it in and you're like i don't need to see it but yeah the set photos it's basically him on a well it's not actually robert it's the stunt man. It's yeah. the stunt man, who's mm -hmm. on the motorcycle. And the stunt man. <laughs> and yeah, it just shows what it's going to look like. But I, I don't believe that's the final suit. I think he's going to get another yeah, you suit. I think there's going to be more. And he's got kind of like needle things on his arms. Did you see them? No. He hasn't got the uh, classic. I what do you call them? Shuriken-looking things on his forearms. He's got oh. like weird needle point things that are strapped to his forearms. Right. No. I don't know. It looks like they're gonna just buy that. Just home in on the gadgets a lot more. Not yeah. just have punchy punchy grapply hook Batman. I do like grapply hooks. Mm, I do like punchy punchy as mm. well. But yeah, it looks decent. I mean, I don't think the cape's there because of safety for the stuntman maybe if maybe. the cape gets uh, trapped in a wheel he's I'll put, dead I'll put it in in post yeah CG that shit CG cape that's what we all need that's how I wear my capes I mean do you want to talk about the other set photos that we saw kind of relating to Batman mm -hmm. Suicide Squad yeah yeah you're not you're not I just don't too like, impressed I just don't, like, I just don't like Harley Quinn <laughs> You feel like she's been too... She's, she's oversaturated, overexposed. It, the, there's not enough room in the market for this Michelle Quinn crap. Yeah. I mean, I for think... Me, for me personally, that is. I think you're right. I think it's just been too shoved in people's faces. It's, it's kind of a good thing, because it's in their little universe of Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey. Joker's not like the main thing yeah. that he is and the female versions took over. Yeah. So that is good. But 
it just gets to that point where it's like overrated yeah. and just a bit annoying when you see it all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I'm not big, I'm not the biggest DC fan in the world, to be fair. Anyway, I like I like Batman and Batman's Rogue Gallery. I mean, I'm my not a massive fan of everything my, else. My Plastic Man's my favorite DC character. Yeah, but you know he's not been popular since like 1943. And he probably never will be. No, he won't. Unless James Gunn brings him into Suicide Squad. Because James Gunn likes to bring all the little unknown characters in. But yeah, going back, let's go back to Batman. They had some news about extra casting with special... Not special, what am I... What's the word I'm looking for? Skilled. Skilled extras. Now, a lot of people are thinking it's... The Flying Graysons. Good old Dick. Dick. Dicky boy. Swinging with Dick. Swinging with Dick until his parents die. Dick off the earth. But yeah, this would be... This would be interesting, but I just think Matt Reeves is shoving too many people into his film. It might just be a cameo. Hopefully. Setting up future stuff. I mean, yeah. If, future universe. If it's stuff. just casting extras, it will be a cameo. Hmm. But they might not even have them. It might just be the circus that they're associated with. Kind of set piece. Yeah. Set there. And you know, we might see a little dick. I love little dicks. We might see one. Little. Little dick in Batman. <laughs> oh, that name. I blame his parents, but we're dead. Right, um, moving on. Holly Quinn season two, the animated Holly Quinn. Yeah, I mean, it's meant to be good. It looks good, to be fair. I just don't like Holly Quinn. <laughs> I like I like all the uh, animated Batman. I do like the, the animated films. DC stuff. There's a lot of great stuff. Especially, yeah. I, I love Teen Titans. Shame they can't just transfer that on screen. Yeah. I mean, we tried to with Titans, the TV show, but... That's meant to be good. I've watched a bit and it's just DC stuff as well. We're going to anger a lot of people talking about this. Yeah. Like Arrow and The I Flash. Have, I and... watched a lot of Arrow. I didn't watch Arrow, I watched The Flash. And I, I watched the first season and a, like a few of the first, uh, second season, first episodes, but it, they just got a bit shit. Yeah. They... <laughs> it's that thing of having a, a TV show that's just got way too many episodes, so they have to fill some episodes with obscure characters that no one really cares about. There's fans out there for everything. Yeah, but I don't care about them. And I say, if I don't care about them, no one cares about them. Uh, we got Batman Ninja. Yes, the uh, anime is getting a stage adaptation. Yes. Now this is very ballsy because yeah. Batman Ninja. We were, we were talking about Power Rangers earlier and it's very much like Power Rangers. In that it's going to be shit. That and... Well, there's a few b good bits in Batman Ninja, but, mm -hmm. you know, they take the Sengoku era and slam it in Batman. Right. Just... <clears throat> <clears throat> like, dick in Batman. Dick in Batman. Dick. <laughs> and, yeah, it's... It's alright. There's many characters in there that represent many... Sengoku era lords and lordesses. That's what you call them, lordesses. <laughs> the lordess. <laughs> Do not correct me. And yet, yeah, I mean, there is a bit where they have big robotic houses, but <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, you've just got to you got to go with it. Batman turns into a big Batman full of bats, yellow bats and Batman. And Joker's like, just... Even jokier. Even jokier than before. Mm -hmm. And he gets a big house robot. Oh. Like Power Rangers famously have big house robots. That's where I'm they, comparing the two. They do have robots. And yeah, putting that on stage, as I, I'd pay good money to see that. I mean, it, it sounds fun. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> see a massive Batman house on stage yeah. jumping at another Joker house. I'd go and watch that. Yeah. But cheap, like. They've got to have some good Kung Fu in there, though. Yeah. It's Batman. 
He's a yeah. kung fu man, isn't he? And talking about kung fu brings us to the end of the Batman section. So, yeah, Batman news. Pretty, a lot of Batman news. I pretty think. good chunk. I think it's all we need now is the trailer. Just give us the trailer. I know he's still filming. Just give us something. That's come from you, not these leaked set photos. <laughs> oh, one, actually, that we didn't talk about was Catwoman. Catwoman, yes. Catwoman. She's in the set photos with Batman on the motorbike. And you just you just see her face through the visor. I mean, people think that a motorcycle outfit is Catwoman's actual... Yeah, it's not going to be. No. Outfit. It's not. No. Not in a million years. Nope. There's going to be some sexy leather stuff cleavage suit cleavage. with a whip and if it's not I'm not seeing that film <laughs> <laughs> okay if they ruin Catwoman for everyone not just me because everyone is misogynistic no you you are there you are <laughs> I'm angry alright we lost footage I'm gonna have to get in touch with HR <laughs> But yeah, we're gonna. That's not a costume. If it's a costume, it, that won't be. She's just in a, a leathers, a bike leathers. Yeah, you know. It might not even be her. Yeah, we don't know for sure yet. I it feel like people, people are just very speculating. Just stupid. Yeah. Stupid people. Bastards. But yeah, that little rant brings us to the end of the Batman news. Next, we've got the Kung Fu remake. The famous show from the seventies and eighties, Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Story, it was, you know, start David Carradine, famous for playing Bill in Kill Bill. Oh, yeah. Uh, before he, you know, killed himself wanking in a cupboard. <laughs> what? <laughs> he, he got asphyxiated and died, he got found in a cupboard in Thailand. Did he actually? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, big time. I don't think that's going to be in the film. No, no, no. But yeah, that's how he, that's how he left this uh, realm. It's a good way to go. I don't know. I think someone might have put him in the cupboard, unless he was doing Wait, some... What? Are you saying he got murdered? No. He will... Asphyxy wanking. Yeah. And he just... Who would put him in the cupboard? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why would he hide in the cupboard? Maybe he was put, like, pulling the thing over the sort of railing to choke himself. Mm -hmm. And he just was in the cupboard and died. Because he weren't getting on a bit. Yeah. He was in his 70s, you know. And, you know, you've got to take... Good care. Play of you. And games very, very carefully there at that age. This is a warning for any elderly listening. <laughs> and have someone on call. Stand or perhaps, yes, tell a loved one what you're doing so they can check on you. Jesus, this episode's gone, gone terribly wrong. <laughs> um... But yeah, Kung Fu Remake. Yeah, they're... One star the man who... But it's a gender bender. Yeah, they're swapping... Uh, doing the old flippity-flop. Flippity-flop on the clippity-cock. And so we've got a woman playing the role David Aradine famously played. Well, you know, every gender bender swappy dop goes amazing. Well, I've, I've got nothing against it in doing it. You know, I just prefer if they just make original content for women. Yeah, don't just fill men's shoes with women because that's just... Give them actual meaty roles. I know it's supposed to be like, yeah, like women power, but I'd rather see them do an original story yeah. that actually empowers women than like trying to take something that's already, already loved by many people, taking out all the actors who everyone loved and then filling in with people who before the film is even released it's getting hate yeah there's always going to be hate for this kind of stuff definitely like there's always hate for everything but for this in particular like we're not even like against it but you look at Ocean's 8 Ghost you look Busters at Ghostbusters especially. yeah there was so much hate. Yeah, it's ridiculous, ridiculous amounts. Before it even comes out. But, and there's so many talented women in the industry that just... I know it's difficult, you know, getting financing or whatever for original content, but it's doable. Yeah, so moving on from that, our next bit of news is game news. 
Ooh, do you like games? Very much so. Do you like films? I have been known to. Well, are you going to love game films? Yes. There have been many really good game films, like Resident Evil, every single film is really good. And Street Fighter is amazing. Yeah. I know you don't like it, but... Well, no, everyone doesn't like Resident Evil films. I like the third one. The third one? And the second one, and the first one, and the rest of them. Jesus. That is a bold statement. <laughs> I like them, they're fun. They are fun films, they have but... to do with the games, but yeah. they're fun. I mean, what else has it been? What other game films? Um, there's that bloody uh, Mortal Kombat's great. Mortal Kombat is pretty good, to be fair. Mortal Kombat's sick. You really like the Pikachu detective thing? Yeah, that's because he took something that weren't really popular in that franchise and... Boom. Boomed it. Boomed it. Put Ryan Reynolds in there. Boomed it some more, and... If so you make a good film, all you gotta do is boom it. Right in the boom. Boom, 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 yeah, boom. The... Oh god. <laughs> Pixels. That's a bad film. That's an amazing film. Don't care what you say. Um. Anyway, Borderlands. Eli Roth. Eli Roth. What do you get? Shit. Probably. Uh, I want it shell shaded. Every bit of the film. If you don't do that, then fuck him. I personally couldn't care less because I don't care for the games. You don't care for the games? I've only played bits and pieces and it weren't for me. We are going to annoy a lot of people. Fuck you people. This is a very aggressive episode. I, I do apologise. But it, it's th- he's got to get the style of the game. He's got to get the characters in there. But don't just do a straight copy of the game because when they do that, it never works out. I mean, Eli Roth, has he made good films? Well, he made Hostel. And Hostel too. So it's a bit... <laughs> I liked, I liked Hostel when that woman's eye was hanging out. He was in Inglourious mm-hmm. Bastards, weren't he? Yeah. He didn't direct it, obviously, but... Borderlands film, man, just... He stole my idea. Did he? I know he did. Because <laughs> I'm the only one that's had an idea for a Borderlands film. You're the original. I created the game. You were the one... That was like, you know what, I don't know this game because it's not being released yet, but I want to make a film on it. Yeah. And then I said, release this game so I can make a film on it in like 10 years after it gets released. And then he was like, Roth, just you beat me to it. it. You know, what a bastard. But as I said, if you don't get the style of the game, it's just going to be bad because that game is so highly stylized mm. that if you don't go balls to the wall 100%, it's not going to, it's not going to do well. I think he's going to take it in middle ground, as they always do. They're too scared to go bust at one, they, they don't want to just strip it all away. Mm. So we go middle ground, it's mediocre, no one cares about it. Mediocre. And we're all moving on with our lives. So just don't get hyped for it, that's what I'm saying. I feel like a lot of people got hyped for the news, because it were all over Facebook yeah. and I looked and I'm like, just, just calm down a bit, because Monster Hunter, the film's coming out, by the same guy who did Resident Evil, with his wife in, and it's going to be terrible, so just everyone calm down. <laughs> oh, I like Resident Evil. <laughs> anyway, next bit of news. Your favourite bit of news from this yeah. week. Uncharted, the film starring Tom Holland and maybe Mark Wahlberg as Sully. Because that's a good casting choice. He's getting uh, filmed. He's beginning filming <laughs> in four weeks. They don't have a director. Who cares? Tom Holland's making it happen. Like, he rang up Sony and was like, I want to be Spider-Man in MCU, make it happen. And they were like, all right, all right. So he's rang up the production company of this and we're just like, we don't really need a director. We've got loads of games to play. We can just copy it. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand it. You know that Uncharted 2 is my favourite game of all time. Well, Uncharted 2 hasn't got young Nathan Drake in, so... So, they're going to... Fucking, why is he, why is he young? Why are we doing the young bit? We don't need, no. I just, see, I'm getting angry again, like I did this morning. <laughs> well, it is, it's quite aggravating when you've got such a good game franchise and they cast Tom Holland to play a, like, middle-aged man. We want Nathan Fillion. I don't necessarily want Nathan Fillion. You need to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ross from Friends. Could do it. Swimmer. Swimmer could do it. He's a very good swimmer. He could swim. 
and they could go whoa 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 and then shoot and murder many men and many not men. even feel no any loss no can Tom Holland do that he's he's got to have paid so much money for therapy after them games have finished like in the story <laughs> kills many people many people no I don't think I don't I don't know what what they're gonna do I just don't like it I don't either <laughs> It's just going to be bad. Yeah. And it's getting released in December. No. It is. No. It's releasing in December, whether you like it or not. Whether it's, not. it's half finished, it's releasing in December. It's never going to get pushed back, because no film ever gets pushed back. It's no. No. Might do what we did with Cats and uh, patch it. <laughs> I think that's release. I'll send a global patch out to every cinema and put in all the CGI after they've released it. No, no, I just don't want to keep talking about it. It's, <laughs> it's been a stressful day as it is, and shall we about this again? Shall we move on from uh, Uncharted? Yes, please. To the next bit of game movie news, that is The Witcher. It's not a movie; it's a TV show. They've cast big ginger giant man who drinks giant's milk, wildling Game of Thrones man, Kristoff. Forgot his last name, but what are you gonna do? Everyone loves him, everyone loves his character from Game of Thrones. He's funny because he drinks giant booby milk. Boobies. And the witch's fantasy, so yeah, good casting all around. Again, I'm not a witcher man. I'm not a witcher man. Um, I'm, but ha I'm happy if they're happy. Happy as Larry, eh? Yeah. Yeah, Larry's a good man. There's no man called Larry, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Something to his shed. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the last bit of game news. The Rock. The Dwayne. The Johnson. Dwayne. Is rumoured to be in Sonic. Two. The movie to The Hedgehog. Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> Knuckles, I'm assuming he'll play. Yeah, definitely. It'd have to be. I mean, if it's Tails, then they're just... An idiot. Well, but... Unless he's going to play a live action character. Oh. Nah, he's Knuckles. And if he's not Knuckles. We petition. We petition for him to play Knuckles. Yeah. He's got to be Knuckles. Yeah, it has to be. When I think of Knuckles, I think of Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne, yeah. No other right to go play him. No. Not even Vin Diesel. No, and I've seen Vin Diesel act. But yeah, I'm excited actually. I ain't seen Sonic the Hedgehog. But I know what happens in the post credits, and it, it seems. I'm hopefully watching it soon. Seems pretty decent. I we'll talk about it in a future episode. Just in about six months when it's on DVD. Yeah. Isn't it? Or other places. Nefarious means. Nefarious means. But well, that's the end of our game movie news. As we had said at the beginning, we are pretty, pretty annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot better episode before. There was so much banter. Yeah. Talked so much about dicks. Now we just want to get through the news because we're pissed off. Yeah. Anyway, taking a left turn, right turn, you turn to horror. Horror. Orphan. Orphan. Dick Grayson. Batman. <laughs> The dick is being put back in the orphan. In Orphan 2. The prequel? It's a prequel, yes. Orphan's a great film. I enjoy it. Very underrated. I'd, say so, I'd say so, yeah. It's not very known. It's very weird. It's peculiar. Mm. I like it when she pushes that kid out of the treehouse and black breaks his leg. Well, yeah, it is about a family who have a kid and then they want another kid and I don't know why they can't have the other kid but they I can't. can't can't remember, but they get an orphan kid called Orphan, like the film. Orphan. Orphan, the orphan. Yeah. And yeah, it tries to kill the other kid a lot. It tries to kill everyone a lot. Yeah. It starts with a little kid though, doesn't it? I, I haven't seen it in years. Probably before. some kind of animal or make goes on to kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they all start. Hi. I know. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, prequel. Which means it's in the past, as we all know. So it's going to be about the orphan in the orphanage, killing other orphans. Well, I don't think she comes from an orphanage, because she's not actually young. Plot twist. 
She's a grown woman. She's just really tiny. And she tapes her tears back. Breasts. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, she uses booby tape to uh, disguise herself as an orphan. I mean, that's... A... As you famously do whenever I want to disguise myself as an orphan, I tape my boobs back. Yes, as a kid, not an orphan. And, yeah. And she infiltrates a family, like all good Russians do. And <laughs> that is no one, I don't think. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> she's not a very good murderer. She's just a small, small woman with taped boobs. The whole film does kind of just rely on the plot twist, don't it? Well, yeah. I like it, though. I yeah. Good. Yeah, and the prequel's going to be interesting. <laughs> interesting, but unnecessary. Yeah. They could, why don't just do a sequel? Did they kill her in the end? I can't, can't remember. remember. She probably just went back to orphanage. She just she ran out of boob tape, and she was like, "Damn, I can't infiltrate here anymore, because they know I don't look like an orphan anymore, because mm. my booby tape." It, as much as we're joking, it is a very disturbing film. It's fun though, and we joke about disturbing things just to get through them in life, Especially like many people today. do. And to carry on with our <laughs> horror news, we've uh, got some horrible news. Uh, good old Ozzy Osbourne has cancelled his tour, hasn't he? Yes, yes. Due to ill, ill health. health. Uh, recently diagnosed with Parkinson's. Yeah. Um, it's not the first time he's had to cancel. Uh, I think it's cancelled the last few times that it's been announced. Just don't die on this, man. I think he just needs to go out. He just needs to rest. Put your feet up. Have some slippers. Eat some bats. Read a newspaper. You know, just do the old man thing. Yeah. You're 70 odd. Just calm down, man. Don't die. That's all we're asking. Too many rock icons have died. Yeah. You've got to live forever. That might be putting a lot of pressure on him. But Is that an Oasis song? Let's not talk about Oasis. I feel like you'd peppered it in, though, just to be annoying. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> um, yeah. Sad news. Sad. I hope he's... I hope he's all, I hope right. he's all good. Yeah. I'm going to send him £15. I'm going to send him £15 and 10p. You bastard. But yeah, moving on to a bit more happier subject. Happier, yes. Uh, Marvel news. Because everyone loves Marvel. And it's taken over every cinema in the world. So it's not going away anytime soon. They're not cinema. Mm. They're like fairground attractions, theme parks. Wow, well, we're talking about him later, aren't we? Mm. Big boy. Mm. Uh, Mysterio solo film. Don't do it. Just stop. Do all the other ones. Do the obscure ones that haven't already been done because we got Mysterio's backstory in Spider-Man Far From Home so we can't really do that and spoil Spider-Man Far From Home give you an alert, spoiler alert right now if you don't want to listen to this and skip it a bit but Mysterio dies doesn't he? Oh big time. You big know, time he's dies. He's not going to be in Rush Hour 3. Let's no, put it that way. he's not. Neither is Spider-Man but you know <laughs> He dies at the end of Far From Home. He but gets blown up, does he? No, he just dies, doesn't he? He just oh, kind of slumps. Yeah. <laughs> he's been it, shot. It's a very boring film. He's been shot, hasn't he? He's it's like bleeding movie. on that walkway. In oh, with the drones and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, ah, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, motherfuckers. Oh, yes. Yes. I can't remember what we talked about this morning with... My mind is going just, it's everywhere. So yeah, he dies, so announcing this is basically spoilers for any kind of reveal that he's still alive in later films. Because you can't do a prequel, because it or it just shows everything in Spider-Man yeah. Far From Home. His backstory is that he created the bath technology that um, manipulates people and de-ages them and shows them in holographic form. Don't know why he created it. He created it for Tony, and then Tony was like, I'm gonna name it Bath. Ha ha ha. Sick. And then he was like, You know what, Tony Stark? Fuck you. I don't like you because yeah. you called my technology sick. But sick can mean good in urban speak, as and the youngsters say. What a good backstory for the villain. Yes. Man laughed at me. 
You know, what, you know what? I really like Far From Home, and now, now I'm actually reading more into it. And it it's annoying me. It's a boring film. It's just another Iron Man film that's got Spider Man in. I don't like Iron Man. We'll leave that there for a later episode, I think. Um, the next Marvel news: Red Hulk. Yes. Is in She Hulk. We've heard yes that. With maybe Hulk. Hopefully. Hopefully, because. You know, we want to see some Hulk on Hulk action, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Big green. Slap in the face. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Forming a band. Yep. She Hulk and Hulk and Red Hulk on drums. Yeah. That's the band name. The Free Hulks. Imagine. I'd buy it. I'd send them £15. Same. Not tempting. No, I dropped it down. They're great. Oh. Uh, so. And Hulk's not going to get that back for you. With his big green sausage hands. Got two big fingers. <laughs> you can't fit down the great. Great Hulk impression there. I know. But yeah, um, at the end of Endgame, <laughs> uh, Hulk is still smart Hulk. He is, yes. And he doesn't go back to being Bruce, so. I mean, if they've got the budget for it, fuck it. Put him in. Yeah. Smart Hulk with She-Hulk versus Red Hulk. I don't like calling him Smart Hulk. I want to call him Tracksuit Hulk. Tracksuit Hulk. I prefer that. Yeah. Hulk who's going to sell you some dodgy goods at market because he looks Serbian. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. Well, apparently this is supposed to introduce Thunderbolts to the MCU. Oh, yes. But I think I have a little inkling you got some insider information, have Insider you? information, because I wrote Black Widow, the film, that Thunderbolt's going to get started in there. Yeah. There's going to be a little tease, I think, because so. General Ross, Rossy Boy, is actually in Black Widow, de-aged a tiny bit, because he's not that far in the past. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he's in the trailer, so he's in the film, because mm-hmm. that's how trailers work, to show you what's in the film. Not always. Mm, not always, Avengers. Been lied to before, oh, and I don't like being lied to. Bastards. But yeah, I think they're going to tease it in Black Widow, maybe have She-Hulk in the post-credit scenes. Yeah. So, best way to do that is to just solo female-led film, introduce solo female-led TV show. And that's a right way to push women in this industry. No gender bending. No gender bending. Gender fucking. Sure. You know, just yeah. stick with the gender. You're that gender. <laughs> There's only two. <laughs> and that's what we all know. What? <laughs> anyway. Is that getting caught? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Just do that, Marvel. Just make us all happy. Mm. Like you normally do with your post credit. Like the whole films are just. Wait and see what happens in post credits. Yeah. So, just make it a good one, and that'll make people subscribe to your more money making streaming service. So, bada bing, bada boom. Really, sky in the room. Let's not mention that rapist. <laughs> to end the news section, you know what? This hasn't been as good as last time, but we've got through it. <laughs> it's been shit. We? We've got it through it, and we're going on to our last big, big. Big news, and that's Scorsese, the man who hates every other film set for his own. And he's making a western. He is his he, first western. He loves westerns, apparently. He does. Mm. Big fan. As he said, I love westerns. Yeah, I saw him. He wrote that on a piece of paper in a restaurant, and I saw it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Ah. And then he just threw it at the waitress. Oh, that's a bit because, rude. You no, know, because she, she liked Marvel. Ah. Did she have a Marvel top on? No, he just knew. He just knew yeah. by the look. Yeah. And, yeah. Then he, and then he kicked a dog when he walked out. He don't like dogs either. No, he was just really angry. Poor dog. Because he wanted to keep that note, so he remembered that he liked westerns. <laughs> He's getting old. Yeah. He's getting on a bit. But he had to throw it at the woman. Stupid For woman. reasons previously discussed. Women, eh? Don't get in front of Martin Scorsese, or he will kick a dog. Yes. True but story. yeah, the That's Western. Story, that. Who's who's casting it? The Leo. big boys. He's two big He's boys. He's muses. He's lovers, probably. Yeah. It's Hollywood. The most influential men in his life. That's cute. Bless him. I don't like him. 
Oh, he's a wonderful director. He's a bit annoying, though, isn't he? Well, you know. Did you see at the Oscars when Eminem came on? No, and because I didn't watch the Oscars. Well, Eminem came on and then it panned to Scorsese and he was just like, meh. Hip pretty hop. I'm an old man. Hip pretty hop. What song did he sing? Eminem. Mm. <laughs> Scorsese. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Eminem sang his Oscar winning song. Oh. Lose Yourself. And everyone were like, why, why is Eminem at the Oscars? Because it was like 12 years, I think. And he put a post on Instagram, 12 years later, I finally accept my award. <laughs> Cheers, Oscars. Didn't they might have come out like 19 years ago? Probably 19. I said 12 because so I'm now. not good with numbers. 19 or 19, something like that. 18, maybe. I'm going to go with 18. Sometime around there. But yeah, he's not a fan of Eminem. And he's Marvel. a fan of westerns. But he is a fan of westerns. And Bobby De Niro and Leo DiCaprio. So he's going to make that film and that's all that's been really announced. Yeah, there'll be more news about that soon. Who do you think is going to be the villain? I think um, the villain is going to be Marvel. And De Niro and DiCaprio are just going to fuck Marvel up yeah. with gunfire and maybe gasoline. Just a big poster of Marvel. Yeah. No, it's a guy called Marvel, but... Oh, right, that'd be good, actually. That'd be some meta comedy. Yeah. Should do it. But no, I think uh, Robert Robert De Niro is going to be the bad guy. He does play a bad guy well. Yeah. Well, so, do, so does Leo. Oh, true. Django and that. Slave yeah. Trader. That role is probably one of his best. Yeah, so he's great in it. So, yeah, it's interesting. We're going to do some more rampant speculation on that when we hear some more news about it. And that, my friends... My pineapples. Well, that's good. That's a good. Uh, our fans are now called pineapples. Pineheads. Pineheads. Ooh. Apples. John. <laughs> what? <laughs> Apples, John. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that is the end of the news. Uh, Jesus. Apologies for uh, how shit that was, folks. Um, as as we said earlier, we had some technical difficulties this morning. Everyone does when they get to our age. You know, we're we're up there with Scorsese. You know, oh, forgetting that we love westerns and that. If only he'd kept the note <laughs> instead of throwing it out of malice and hate. Poor lady, she's just trying to support her son. Moving on to our next section. I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Pineapple for the next section. What hairy pineapples have you got for us today? Well, because we, we talked to Jackie Chan uh, last week, yeah. you know, and uh, I'm a big fan of his, obviously. And I have uh, many, many pieces of, you know, merchandise and physical media related to him. Uh, in particular, I have a lot of VHS tapes of his. VHS, you say? Yes, sir. <laughs> I counted how many tapes of his I own the other day. Uh, I also included Laserdisc and Beta in this. Yeah. And I have, if my maths is correct, 73. That's a lot. Not including duplicates and my moldies, which I need to get around to clean in. So it could be way over 80. Probably, most definitely. Yeah. Is. Now so, that's when you can call yourself a fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe a stalker. I mean, I've not seen him too much recently because of the injunctions and stuff. Yeah. And, you know. And coronavirus. Yeah, you know, I can't travel over there at the moment because my immune system's not as good as it used to be. Mm. You know, getting old will do that to you. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's still quite a big, I say big, if there's a quite a decent community of tape collectors still out there. There's a lot of um, sort of Facebook groups and yeah. stuff, uh, buy, buying and selling or... You know those kind of things, or, or just selling and buying. Yeah, or just posting what you what tape you're watching tonight, th that night, or whatever. Yeah. But there's there's some there's some characters. Yeah. Yeah. There's a. Are you one of them characters? No, because I'm you know a normal person. <laughs> you're regarded a normal person in the realm. Yeah. I know, right? There must be some characters. <laughs> um. These are, these are middle-aged men. Middle-aged. Um, you know, I'm one of the younger... I'm on the younger side of the community, shall we say. Yeah. And th there's, there's a lot of infighting and... Um, there's a lot of tension. Frustration over VHSs. Yeah, there's a man called the Mayor. The Mayor? Yeah. Is he the big man? 
he's a twat. <laughs> <laughs> he wears a mask and he doesn't go by his real name on Facebook. He's just an odd guy. He lives in this massive house that's got like over 10,000 tapes in. 10,000? Because it was his dream in the past to open a rental shop. But they sort of went bust rental shops, you know, because... Yeah. Uh, I bet you got very angry when Netflix came out. Oh, yeah, you don't like DVDs either. You don't like it. So he wanted to open a rental shop just... For tapes. Wow. But DVDs came out and he calls them little um, discs of hate. He's just a peculiar man, and is I'm, I got booted out of his VHS group uh, just for being in another VHS group. What? So you didn't even piss him off? You just joined another VHS no, I bought, group? No, I bought tapes off him before in the past. You know, I posted stuff on it and that. Um, he's just a pure crazy, crazy man, and he does like these live streams every week or whatever. Yeah. And it's just him and a man who goes by the name The Droid. So you got the mayor and the droid. Yeah, and the, there's a man, an American man who was sometimes in it called Das Wrestler, and he wears a luchador mask. Gotta give him respect for that. Yeah, and he's a bit of a twat as well. And they're just, they're, they're very racist and oh, bigoted right. and... Really? I felt very uncomfortable being in that group. Yeah. And I mean, I was there to buy tapes and stuff, but then at the same time, I'm like, you know, I don't believe in any of this nonsense that you're sprouting. I'm quite happy I got kicked. Was it like not even joking? No, big, t- big time bigots. Big time, you feel like they could actually hurt someone. Yeah. If they wanted to plant uh, someone. Yeah, it was odd. But, yeah, and he's got beef with many people in the other group. <laughs> because there was some, some something about someone got ripped off or something. And this stems back like years. This beef. And it still gets brought up, and it's wonderful. I love when drama kicks off in the groups. You know, just instantly click that turn on notifications button. I'm gonna keep following this, it's my night's entertainment. It all kind of seems... I mean, I'm going to talk about kind of like bullying and bullying over social media, Mm. or the awareness segment. And this just kind of seems like targeting just random groups of people because these men are bored and they didn't get their dreams of owning a rental shop. Yeah, essentially. Essentially. <laughs> it's it's peculiar. Like, and there's different types of tapes and stuff. Like, there's uh, sell-throughs, mm-hmm. uh, which is sort of, you know, your small box ones that you'd like. You would have bought in like Woolworths or like a W.H. Smiths or an HMV kind of thing. Yeah. But then there's your big box ones, you know, your rental tapes, yeah. which you would have bought from like a Blockbusters or, you know. And they're the more desirable ones. And there's a lot of infighting because cell phones are essentially worthless, monetarily speaking. But there's a lot of cell phones that didn't get released on in, on a big box. And there's a lot of like waving dicks about at each other saying, my collection's better than yours. And again, these people are middle-aged. There's a man who I won't name. And he was just posts all the time, like these tapes, he's like, oh, you'll not find out what's fucking rare as this, I bet you're grand, you won't find out what's rare as this, and then he talks, about, and he's got his his own group because he gets banned from everywhere, and that's where all the banned people go, <laughs> because they like freedom of speech, you know, and oh this got, this got speech wrong. It's like little kind of hate groups in something, like, do you get it, I don't know, well, we won't know, but... Like other collecting kind of things, like comics and whatever. I don't. I'd imagine, I wonder I'd if, imagine so, but it's just. Is it just that? See, I don't want to insult you, <laughs> but <laughs> because VHSs are so kind of, I feel like they're a bit forgotten about now. Yeah, they're an old. So you only get format. It's only middle-aged men that are collecting them. Hmm. You no, know, and they're from a different period of time, you know, and things were different. And, it, and them kind of people just kind of, we don't want to get too political, but it's just, it's just horrible, isn't it? Yeah. It's disgusting. There was, um, this one guy got banned for a, like, a, he got like a three day ban from one of the groups. And he's an admin of this preset scrapyard, mm. you know, but he got banned from another group called Videorama because some guy posted some cell throughs for sale and he was like, oh, they're not even worth a fiver. You know, and people are like, what have you got to be a prick for and stuff? And he just kept going on and on. And then he posted in the pre cert thing about everyone in Videorama being pre- um, self through loving pussies who can't take a joke, it's all banter. 
it's and then a guy commented on it saying we fought Germany for freedom of speech. Oh my god. And I'm like, god. well you didn't fight no one, did you? No. <laughs> it's just they a... didn't fight Germany for you to go and bloody shout about the VHSs and call everyone very hurtful names, did yeah, they? Yeah, it's um it's a it's a peculiar community. Uh, that, this is just the sort of not even scratching the surface of it really. Um I will talk about it more probably deeper in another episode a future episode is there good things so. though there's gonna be good there's lots of good about it I, I love collecting tapes yeah i love i love the physicality of them you know but the groups that you're in no, there's, lots like... of, there's lots of great stuff in them yeah there's the anger and hate and the bile um is infrequent compared to the yeah to the good stuff yeah i didn't want to just pull it out there like you know, there's if a. If you want to collect VHSs, stay away from group chats because they're gonna. Yeah. I didn't want to kind yeah. of put that message on yeah. there. There's another group called the Video Club, and they do sort of like a, a theme every Friday. So they'll pick yeah. like a specific theme, and you pick your favourite tape, and sort of if it's related to that theme. Yeah. Like uh, the one on the Friday just gone was your favourite import tapes. So tapes not released in the UK, obviously. Yeah. And I posted some that some Japanese tapes that I've got and. A Dutch release of Police Story, my oh, favourite film. Which, which we'll um, get into later. Which weirdly uses a different film image on the front cover. It uses Armour of God, which came out a year after on That's the front. That's quite confusing for yes, everyone involved. Unless you uh, know Jackie Chan films, you'd be like, oh, this, this scene's not in Police Story well, while watching it. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of great in the community, to be fair. It's just there's a few... Yeah, I feel like bad grapes, you know. But then they kind of overshadow the good. Sometimes. In many, in many ways, in many ways, yes. I feel like it's it's like that with a lot of stuff, but it's quite interesting knowing that there's them people out there in like the VHS mm. community that'll get so riled up and so angry and hateful towards yeah. things that don't even relate to the VHS as they're on about. Yeah. I well, talking about. Jackie Chan. Yes. It's gonna lead us into yes. the big pineapple of the week. My my review of Police Story. Yes. 1985 film. Directed by the one and only Jackie Chan. Which you were surprised at when you found last night. I was gonna make a joke about it. Directed, written and starring Jackie Chan. And it's basically that, except for he didn't write it, did he? He did. He did write it. At least it. I think he was he either wrote it all or it's co written. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, kind of just screwed me over there, didn't you, Jackie? If you're listening, we know you are, obviously. Opening, I want to say, it's got an awesome, awesome score. It does. I, I know. mean, very yeah. 80s. It, I mean, it's incredibly, it's like the most 80s film ever made. Yeah, it just blows you away. That opening scene with the soundtrack, I mean, it blows you away because it's literally like shouting in your face guns and stuff and the soundtrack's literally with every note shouting in your face i won't do an example because it'll just be me like making random noises yeah well you know i know the score yeah, yeah. pretty much off my heart <laughs> but yeah i do it i love the opening scene it set a good a good pace for the film i was like okay 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 and it was basically a big show reel of Look at how many stunts Jackie Chan can do. Psycho Wing, I've put down. Yes. That is a character name. What a name. He's a, he's a baddie, isn't he? He's a Psycho bad, bad Wing. Man. I mean, I just thought of a chicken wing. Big old chicken leg. We'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all I've got to say about that. That was like probably one of the first lines that was said. Yeah. Was saying Psycho Wing. So, first off the bat, the opening to this film, Psycho Wing, an amazing soundtrack. So I was like, okay, okay. And then we get to um, when they're all getting ready to go out and do the operation. Yeah. They've got the... Uh, one thing that I picked up on was they shred the paper. That'd be read, like the brief of the mission. Yeah. They shred it and then go out to do the mission. I thought that was pretty like little cool aspect. I've not seen that before in films. 
It's the Asians for you. And it's like, yeah. Like meticulous. So no one else knows what we're doing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty, I enjoyed that. I put extremely 80s. Because <laughs> it, it just it's is. It's so 80s. I feel like. But yeah. Um, Jackie will slap a bitch. Yeah. Because he, he does slap a female in like the first opening sequence as well. He slaps in glasses off her face. Because she spat in his face. Yeah, but I'm saying gender equality, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to spit on him, he's going to slap you. You slap him, slaps you back. Right. Um, <laughs> there was a great camera angle in the first shootout. It was when the two alleyways like met at the V-point. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, shooting around the corner and stuff. And it showed the whole, like a panoramic. Right. Okay. And I was like, this, this is an 80s film. And they're doing shit that we just find new now and we're thinking like oh that looks good in film it's done police story did it about 30 years ago calm your ulcers so yeah that's good um it's say extras looked uh, scared of shooting guns in the first opening <laughs> so kind of like shying away from the blanks firing yeah. obviously which you know extras are extras aren't they i've been one we're not great well i'm great but some people aren't uh, the bit where he pisses himself. I liked it because I thought it was a believable scenario yeah. where you would actually piss yourself. Um, and it was executed it's, uh, very well. It's one of the policemen that pisses himself. He's a bit shell-shocked yeah. in uh, the shootout, we should add. And it's normally used for comedy. And this time mm. it would actually, like, this man is scared to death that he will never see his family ever again. So he's going to piss himself. Obviously, the stunt set piece is just amazing. Yeah, it's very, very influential. Yeah. The, the whole opening, really. American cinema just stole them all. Yeah. I mean, the opening car chase down the slums and stuff. Through the shantytown, yeah. That's just like what Fast and Furious did uh, a couple it, of years back. Yeah, Bad Boys 2. Bad Boys 2. What they did it in a Hummer. Yeah. Uncharted, the video yeah. game, stole it. Yeah. It's just... What I found, like, the general overview of this film is, like, they've... I don't know if it's the original, like, way of doing it, but they've done something that American cinema has nitpicked and stole little things from yeah. over the past two decades, so people think it's new. Like, even the comedy in it. Yeah, yeah. There's so many comedic moments with Jackie that you could see parallel in, like, 21 Jump Street and stuff like that. Like, the really dry humour that doesn't land well shouldn't land but it does yeah. and that's what I really loved to be fair however right, I'm going to get to a bad <laughs> thought and you here's know, where it starts <laughs> you know what it is yeah I know what it is it's my least favourite part of the film as you know <laughs> because how stunts are done obviously you want to do the one the most dangerous one at the end and it's when the car goes off the top of a building and falls directly on the bonnet yeah, sort of stood up right. Yeah. Kind of like a domino. And then they cut, and the next scene is just driving along. Fine. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I hate that edit. I, I love all the stunts, but that sticks out like a sore thumb. I hate that edit. Yeah. Uh, See, so at least, like, we agree that that's a bad point of the yeah, film. Yeah, no, it's not a bad point, because it's the best film ever made. <laughs> <laughs> it's just annoying. Yeah, it's just it just sticks out too much. It is very very visible, but you kind of have got to forgive it because it was made in nineteen eighty five, yeah. and there's no way they were not going to use that shot. Yeah, you know they're not made of cars, are they? No. Well, Jackie Chan's made a bit suspicious, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> bus chase. I put fuck you, Mel Gibson. Because Mel Gibson runs in Lethal Weapon. <laughs> After a car. But Jackie runs better. Does. With an umbrella. Yes. Sticks on side of the bus. He's just... And it's all... Yeah. It's, it's all just, real. It's all real. And it scares me, but it's fucking exhilarating to watch. It's amazing. Jackie Chan, man. I bet he could still do it now, and he's like nearly 100. He's nearly 66. It's off way there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, the bus, the bus chase is, um, it's amazing. they had to um, change the wooden umbrella to a metal one because it kept slipping off. That and makes it, sense. You know, and he didn't want to die. No. <laughs> While he's getting kicked in the head at a bus that's travelling 40 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, that's the thing with Chinese... 
uh, Hong Kong Ian. Hong Kong cinema, like the kicks and the punches. Some obviously aren't real, but then some are very, very real. And everyone talks about like, and I even thought, like Tom Cruise is amazing. And people are like, Tom Cruise and Keanu use and do all the stunts themselves and stuff. Keanu doesn't. I'll not get into that. Um, yeah, and everyone was impressed that uh, Tom Cruise broke his ankle, was it? It was, uh, it? It's, it's some and fallout related injury, yeah. And then just like limped off while they were filming. He breaks his pelvis. pelvis and just gets up like he's not even hurt. Well, yes, this was while dropping from a really high balcony through like a pagoda type thing. Yeah. Onto the, just straight onto the floor. No padding or anything. <laughs> like, he's a mental man. Yeah. And he's lucky to be alive. He's, yeah, he's, he's almost died. M more than once. Mm, yeah. I've put Smart Jackie briefcase because... Oh, yes. When he accepts the money from the man to not kill him. Yeah. Takes the money... And then he just sticks going back in his face and he's like, you're arrested. Yeah. And in most films, stuff like that, where they just accept the money and don't do anything to a bad guy, mm -hmm. really annoys me. Okay. Like, I pick out little plot holes like that. I'm like, no, can't, can't say it's a good film now. Like, there was one moment in John Wick where I got really pissed off, mm. and you know about this, where they could have easily killed John Wick, but it didn't. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It yeah. didn't. Yeah. And, yeah. We won't get into that. Right? A bit in the church. Yeah, where yeah. he's strapped to the chair. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm just going to explain all my evil I'm just going to talk plot. and get me meant to kill you in hilarious fashion. Yeah, and it just doesn't work, obviously. But yeah, yeah, they've got a lot of political points in this film, to be honest. Mm. They've got, like, the higher-ups taking credit for all the work that Jackie's done on the mission. That's in a lot of American yeah. cinema. The, uh... The Home Invader scene. Yes, yes. I put, I loved it, but I thought it was shit at first. Yes, yes. Because they, they pull a little switcheroo on you. Yeah. Where it's actually Jackie who's planned for this home invasion to happen so he can prove to the person that he's, he's looking after, that he can actually look after him and that they actually need him. Yeah. It's done in a way, it's kind of mirroring... Like slasher films, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. With yeah. the mask, he's got a killer he's got with a mask on the yeah. giant knife. knife. And there's a point where it got me because the woman falls on the floor, and the killer dives on the floor <laughs> and tries to kind of slash at her feet. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like that was the point where I'm like, nah, this is this is a shit point in the film. But then Jackie comes in, and you see him talk to the killer as his friend. And be like, right, we need to do this and we need to do that to make it look believable. And they're like, oh shit, this surprised me here. He's not just a pretty face. He's not. And he's very, very amazing at slapstick comedy. Yeah, he's good. I mean, that whole bit with the phones and the pencil. Yeah. And you just need to watch this film because I was surprised and I think you will be surprised as well. Um, I've put baby distraction. They have the pram and the baby. Yes. And then... This is, a, yeah, the home invasion has been successful. She now believes that Jackie can protect her. And then almost straight away, immediately after that, a real attack occurs. And they use the old, oh no, the run over the baby routine. But that's the thing. Is it old while they were doing this film? I don't know. I mean, it's old now because it's in everything. Yeah. I mean, it's in Sons of Anarchy, for God's sake. <laughs> and, yeah, that's the th like, this has made me want to watch even older films and just find out where all these little tropes came from. Because even if, like I said before, even if they did put these tropes in here from other films, they've executed it in a way that's just really good. I'm not a fan of the birthday scenes, I'm going to be honest. They were too much pie in Jackie's face. Too many pie in face gags. Yeah. For you. You're and wrong. They made, a, they made a suicide joke. I didn't really... <laughs> It didn't really hit. <laughs> now I was like, Jesus. It is I know it's a different time yeah. and everything, but he jokes about his girlfriend committing suicide because she feels bad for not talking to him. And I'm like, that's... Yeah. Right, Jackie Chan's character in this film is the worst. <laughs> like, he's a terrible human. He's He's got some, you know, issues, I will agree. 
I mean... But he can kick a man well. Nearly straight after his girlfriend leaves because she thinks he's cheating on her. With the witness protection person. Yeah. He goes and tries to sleep with a witness protection person. <laughs> I mean, she is kind of leading him on, but you'd think he'd have some self-restraint. But he's just a terrible, terrible person. And there's even bits later on where you're like... Jesus Christ, why are you with him? Why are you with Jackie? Yeah. And obviously he's called Jackie in the film. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan, in the, absolutely. Well, we, we, we watched the English dub yeah. uh, version, I should say. Yeah, I wasn't going to mention it because, you know, dubs are always like... Mm, because... I love the dubs. They were the first versions I watched. Well, you can't really say anything bad about them because it was 1985 and we didn't have good voice actors back then. Did they not? I don't think so. No. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> um, going back to the uh, the birthday scenes, we get to see uh, the one and only's bum. I mean... And what I've put is uh, Jackie's bum equals yum. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a very, very pert bottom. He has. A wonderfully, wonderfully Them slappable. And tight abs and Oof. perky cheeks. And it turned me on to Asian men. And I'm famously, you know, into women. Famously. Famously. Well I'm well known. But yeah, I put Jackie as the worst boyfriend, but great cop. But also a bit of an idiot as well. Big time. A big time idiot. Big time. <laughs> His character just is an all-round just buffoon. But he's, he's just a really good cop sometimes. It's, it's weird. He's dedicated to the force. Very. You know, more so than his relationship with But he May. doesn't mean to be dedicated to the Force. The Force? I, we're not talking about Star Wars. <laughs> the police force. It's, it's a bit confusing. He's great though, isn't he? The way he kicks and he's like, what about? Yeah. I've put Jackie making onesies popular <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Because that onesie did look very comfortable. He, he wears a nice boiler suit, doesn't he? He does. He's got some nice parking in this film. He does. Not he, the cake. <laughs> He can park a car. I'll tell you. Right now. Big time. There's that stereotypical racist thing of Asians can't drive, but god damn they can park. Damn straight. <laughs> uh, Slipped it in there, didn't he? Yeah. Good and proper. There's a funny little funny little bit where they have a sex tape in court. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just throw that in there. I mean it is a bit cringy, but you gotta love them little bits, aren't you? Nineteen eighty five. 1985 sex tapes in court and one thing that did tickle me shit on cock station oh yes <laughs> um well we really should have talked about the narrative at the start of this really um, and it, it, people get it it's a police story so essentially jackie chan is a man he is a man who can flip and flip kick it. and punch and he's a man who works on the force police force <laughs> not the star wars force and um <laughs> They're essentially trying to get this sort of big, big time, baddie gangster. Who's very man. small he's, and old, and he drives in a minivan. So you know he's a bit of issue though. <laughs> so you know it's good quality, and you're going to get some good mileage. Um, yeah, and they sort of the witness that Jackie Chan protects is sort of his secretary, you know, and they sort of there's some shenanigans that occur. Shenanigans. Um, and they want to you know, get evidence on him and it goes tits up because of the old sex tape escapades and stuff. Yeah. So then... Because he was supposed to record her... Confession. Confession, but he recorded something that sounded like a sex tape, but yeah. it wasn't because it talks about him putting his cactus inside some body. Plant pot. Plant pot. Because it's his pride and joy. Yeah. Oh, don't poke me with that thing. Yeah. And all that kind of... Never one like, ha ha ha. And because there's no, there's no visual, they think they're on about penises. Penises going inside plant pots. Mm. Jackie likes to have sex with plants. You heard that air first. <laughs> yeah. That's a hot scoop. And just, it gets demoted, essentially, uh, because it, it went a bit wrong. And that's where he ends up in the police station that you like the name of. Shit on cock police station. Shit on cock. Not even joking. It's, it says it in the film. About five times. There's a sign. Uh, and he says it multiple multiple times. Yeah, while answering phones. And it's, yeah, I just couldn't stop laughing because I'm an immature little prick. Yep. Much like a cactus. <laughs> also, I've learned if you uh, tell Jackie Chan to do something in a film, he does it. He hears you through the TV because I said, do a dance. And then he proceeded to do a dance. It's because he's studying some cow doo-doo. Cow doo doo, and he do the dance. Sort of rappy beat 
yeah. came in in the soundtrack and you were like, and I went, do dance, a dance, do a dance, man. And I knew that it was going to do a dance. I've been seeing the film countless times before. Yeah. So I was just like looking over at you, pe- peering. And then he did the dance. I was like, yeah, <laughs> he did the dance. Do a dance, do the dance. That's what I've wrote down. I've already talked about the uh, phone call improv. Yeah, there's slapstick. Uh, just juggling about four phones at once, and it does have some very weird. I think it's another rape joke. There is another rape joke. Yeah, but what are you gonna do? Nineteen eighty-five, I guess. It's not not saying that's a good thing to put in your films, but rape is acceptable in nineteen eighty-five. That's what I'm taking from what you've just said. Well, Jackie Chan seems to think so because he don't really care that much when she says I'm being raped no she hasn't she's not being raped she was raped oh. <laughs> a year ago but there's a woman who's being beat by her husband yeah. on another line and there's a random pastor man and he's also talking to May at the same time there's a lot of threads going on in that and piece the funny thing is that he keeps like saying oh you've been raped to like the pastor <laughs> that sounds weird <laughs> And then, like, your husband's beating you to his girlfriend. I mean, it's not funny at all. But it is. But it was, I guess. It's a very touchy subject, this whole scene. I mean, the physical comedy in the scene is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the dialogue is probably not very good. You could could have done with uh, being less... yeah. Yeah, just different topics, Jackie. I don't know why you're so obsessed. You wrote the film. So, I've got a different view on Jackie Chan now. Swallowing rubbers. <laughs> Not healthy. Erasers. Erasers. Ru- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pencil rubbers. He swallows while eating some some noodles. Noodles. Obviously. With... Racist. <laughs> with pencils. Because he doesn't have any chopsticks. Yeah. And he does swallow the erasers. It kind of made me feel really sick watching that. Because you don't like noodles. And then there's a bit, right, when you... When you tie someone up onto a chair in a film as a hostage, you don't expect to see some weirdly bondage-looking tie knots. It's because uh, the uh, Selena, the... um, Gomez. No. The the secretary, she's um, tied up, isn't she, by the bad guys, and Jackie gets a hot tip from Sharky. (laughs) He's He's in formant to go and uh, rescue her and make the case again and then fight scene then shoes kicks yeah and they jump off a very high building into yeah, a swimming pool throws her off a building into a swimming pool for real she done die I think she might have that might have been the last ever scene she filmed possibly earlier on in the film we meet his higher ups what is it sergeant and captain yeah and I thought they were dodgy because they did look dodgy and they did like a little evil laugh turns out they're not dodgy and I was like whoa whoa pulled not another switcheroo on switcheroo, me switcheroo the they? old switcheroo and I, I like it when films fuck with my head yeah and this one did the dodgy people weren't dodgy they were like, you know what, Jackie, you go and do your dodgy stuff. I mean, not very good cops, because they should have just arrested Jackie Chan, but yeah. they didn't. And you need that for the story, I guess. And the best bit in the film, uh, totally random out of nowhere, Jackie's about to go into the last like fight of the film, I guess. The last... The climax. The climax of the film. And his girlfriend's just stood there with a fried chicken leg, is it? It looks a bit... I think it looks turkey. big, doesn't it? It's a big, big old... Big old leg. Just talking to him normally and not even like acknowledging that she's got a big turkey leg in her hand. Why? <laughs> it's a big fucking leg. <laughs> why? <laughs> just why? And I've just got to accept that it's from 1985 and deep fried turkey legs were the shit. They were popular back then with um, the young folks. That's what everyone's got to acknowledge and understand without any question. I mean, if you question it, Jackie's coming for you. Big time. Big time. And then obviously talking about the last the last scene, the climax of the film, the stunts in that are bloody amazing. They are, aren't they? I mean, I'm not a massive fan of action films, I'm just gonna say that and I love this film. Yes. He's happy. I mean, I've said what two bad things about it, and that's due to like editing and just comedy that I don't enjoy. Yeah. And pies and faces. And I was like, mm, just cut that scene out. Don't even need to be in there. But yeah, the last, uh, <laughs> the climax of the film. Jackie does, what is it? It's like most dangerous stunt in this film. Yeah. 
where he slides down a pole into loads of electric he's going to, yeah, he's, he's, he jumps from very high up in the um the shopping mall, shopping mall and he, he sort of fireman pulls down this piece which is covered in um electrical wires lights and stuff and then just drops to the ground hard what did you say he had like loads of burns and yeah he got he got like second degree burns and broke more stuff Jeez, that man. it's my favorite stunt in any film ever I, yeah. love, I love it and i think i mean even if you watch the credits of this film you'll love it because they show all the stunts and, takes and yeah yeah stuff going done. stuff going wrong yeah many shots of people gathering over jackie's lifeless body hoping that he's still nope, alive I hope he's not dead but yeah all in all amazing film i was going to say good and then i realized you would have slapped me very hard it would yeah i loved it it's good in it it is good john cena lent the uh extraction <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy also gets like his comeuppance i'm just gonna put that out there oh yeah definitely jackie chan just he gets punched a lot yes yeah. stomach and the lawyer gets fucked up as well overall what would you rate it out of 17 uh i would rate it a good 16.8 ah just got something to it's two a good score things. it's a very good score yeah i mean it's no 17 oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is so i'm gonna hand it over to you mr pineapple um your review my notes are a lot less meticulous uh, than yours and i did watch it a good while ago now i watched it on the monday straight after we recorded the last episode yeah so it's not as fresh in my mind as um as please story is for you well from the get-go um i love the score pretty much straight away yeah yeah the, that's the thing we can agree on yeah both of these films yeah, amazing per score percussion based jazzy oh yeah sort of drives the narrative in many ways yeah, it kind of follows the character's tempo. Yeah, it? sort of sets the tone in many respects. Um, and that lasted sort of throughout the entire piece, really. But with that being said, it was quite frantic, the pace of the film. Yeah. It was non-stop. You know, you had to take sort of a breather every now and then just to, you know, unwind a bit because there's so much happening at, kind of so at once. Kind of Yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, when you look at the story of the film... Obviously, Michael Keaton plays this actor who's been very big doing these big superhero franchises mm. in his early career, and now he's kind of gone off the rails a bit, and he's put it's all his money... It's a bit of a has-been, Yeah, you could say. He's put all his money into this play that isn't doing very well, and he's rewrote it himself, and it just, it just spirals off from there. I mean, it's very self-contained, the film. Mm. I think why I love the director so much is created this feel of franticness that you do get when you're putting on a theatre production i mean i've never myself put on a theatre i know you you yeah. do the old acting yeah and i've exactly. co-directed and put a show on before Excellent. so it's like the way that they show all the backstage stuff mm. and the nervousness and the actors and yeah just everything that goes on in between all the actual stage scenes <clears throat> it's just very like spot on yeah. weirdly i mean there is like fantastical elements to the film but yeah i'll let you carry on i thought i'd just give an overview of that's this. yeah speaking oh. of uh the acting i everyone was sort of on form yeah. like, there's no sort of weak links not even zach no i thought he was really good it is definitely michael keaton's film though he's just bloody good yeah he should have got the oscar it's probably the only time he was going to be close to getting an Oscar, and he should have got it. Fuck you, Redmayne. Bastard. Yeah, Reddy Redmayne. Everyone, um, Emma, Emma Stone is a former addict, you know, and sort of not getting the love that she wanted from her dad when she was younger and still at this point in her life too. Ed Norton, playing Ed Norton. Yeah. You know? I love how he can just, like, take that character who is obviously such a elevated version of himself yeah and play it so well without any remorse yeah it's <laughs> because he's, he is a prick yeah he's <laughs> in that film there's rape yeah almost attempted attempted, attempted rape, rape from ed norton um on stage we're not saying ed norton not real not rapist. real rape yes um acting acted rape in front of in front of an audience you know on the stage 
and then it's just there with a fucking stonk on just i think that's a very good depiction of like when method actors oh for think they're doing method yeah, yeah and just fuck around like with the whole jared Leto situation <sighs> with what he did to his cast members don't even because he's just a tosser i'm gonna well, add him. i'll add him later but yeah he talks about emma stone yeah i think that's a great depiction of mental illness yeah in film i think also michael keaton's is i, I will get to that yeah um later on but i just think everyone was just on fire and there's nothing else i can say about the acting it's just fucking good yeah i mean there's not that many castmen not really um eight at most yeah. like main sort of cast with speaking roles um i like the fact that they did cast a lot of like broadway veterans and stuff in like the sort of minor roles as well yeah which is the just, um, sort of random roles the bad acting scene yeah yeah that's one of my favorites just it's so spot on and that actor you gotta give it to him because he's probably a very very good actor yeah. who's having to act like he's a very very uh, bad actor and it's just yeah just the way it's executed and well the way it's shot obviously very innovative and yeah obviously it's made to look like it's one one shot continuous one. take you know and it just it works you know it shouldn't work it shouldn't work i mean there are a few times where you can like say like yeah that's the cut well if you can't see the edit then you're just a moron yeah but you like to believe that it's smooth fucking works it transitions well for, through from day to night while still being the same like shot and stuff and oh the uh when the shot of the building outside, yeah, isn't it? yeah yeah and it's just wonderful and it must have fucking took a lot of work yeah definitely that's the thing about that director who likes to just make everything look as pretty as he can, I yeah. guess. Um, with that, I like the inner monologue that um, Michael Keaton has going on. Um, with Birdman. With Birdman in his brain. Yeah. Brain hole, always pecking at him and what's not. Yeah. thought it was very funny and sad. Yeah, at, it's... At the same time. I guess that's where the mental, mental ha- um Like... It deals with mental illness a lot, this film. He's clearly in some kind of deep depression. You know, there's a midlife crisis perhaps happening. I mean, he's a man that's been loved by many people and he's trying to get that fame back and that love and not really showing any love to anyone else. Mm. Like his daughter. Yeah. He just wants to love him, like, really. Yeah, there's, um, there's a piece where he's just been, he's been out somewhere and she's in one of the rooms and he can smell like weed. Oh, yeah. Or something. It's like, how can you do this to me and stuff? And I'm like, oh, he's, you know, he's thinking about, it's like, just thinking about his play. You know, I was like, that's fucking heartbreaking, man. Yeah. He's not thinking about her health. Yeah. He's thinking, if anyone from the outside world sees, it's Emma Stone who plays it, daughter. Emma Stone smoking that joint and we're going to have another thing to attack him with. Yeah, it was fucking devastating. And that's the funny thing, like, it doesn't really even involve the outside world or anything like that, but you can just yeah. tell that's what would have happened without even mentioning it. Sad. Yeah. In many places, it's really, really sad. It made me cry, it's fun. I mean, I'm not a little bitch. <laughs> it, I mean, um, mental health, you know, it's a big thing for me and that, you know, and it just, it's ambiguous in everything that happens. Yeah. Is it a film about mental health or is it just a comedy about a man who wants to do a play Do a play, and he's got a bird in his brain? Can he really fly? What, you know, it's just all up in the air. That's what I love about it because I still kind of relate it to mental health, even if it is, because it's so ambiguous. Mm. It's like, that's what his thought pattern would be. Because I think yeah. the whole film, because it obviously, it's shot and it follows Michael Keaton through everything. Much. There's not really that many scenes that Michael Keaton's not in. So it's all either Michael Keaton's point of view or his daughter's point of view. There is a, f- a few other bits where just where Ed Norton and Naomi Watts. Yeah. And when he's naked and stuff. Yeah, it kind of. But the way it is shot, it kind of. You know when it's like their character's story without. Yeah, yeah. Saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like the, the point where Ed Norton first gets introduced and then he goes into the changing room and stuff yeah. following him through that you automatically think right it's his story now yeah like 
I was unsure what kind of genre it was trying to be. You know, as I said, is that a mental health film? Is it a drama? Is it about, is it a comedy? Is it a black comedy about a fucking, just a play? You know, I was just, I, I liked that. Yeah. It's not done too much where it's too, like, artsy, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's still entertaining. It's not just scenes that just don't make sense. Well, yeah, I was never bored or anything. I thought yeah. it was just wonder, wonderful. So let's, right. Can he fly? Can he fly? Is he actually Birdman? No. No. Are you referring to the scene where he jumps off the building? Or... All of it. Well, it kind of... That first scene where it's asking the question, can he fly? Mm. Kind of shows you that he can't. But yeah, that first scene where it kind of answers it because he's stood. He runs and he jumps off the building. Mm. And then the next scene after that is him just stood at the top of the building. And yeah, yeah, yeah. like, what are you doing? But I'm guessing you're referring to the end yes. of the film as well. Shall we go to... Do you want to go straight to the end now? Or? Yeah, because I'm going to dissect it in not chronological order. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, he's in hospital at the end. After having tried to kill himself on stage. Yeah, because he wanted to shut the audience, basically, didn't he? Or he did he just to... want to kill himself? Yeah. <sighs> See, that's a film that the whole film's just asking questions about yeah. itself because it's... Was it a failed suicide attempt? Or was he trying to martyr himself in a way mm. to have that infamy always yeah perhaps to be the guy that shot himself on stage mm. but yeah at the end of the film he um he's in hospital and his daughter comes to visit and then she goes out the room for a second mm. to get a vase for some flowers yeah which is a big like theme in the film that keeps being brought up and then she comes back into the room and the window's open and you can hear, like, ambulance noises and stuff. But he is in an hospital. Yeah, I know. But they play it very well to, like, say, yeah, he just jumped out and he's killed himself. But then the camera pans out and Emma Stone's looking up and smiling. and smiling, like, turning to Birdman, he can fly. It does ask a lot of questions, because I was like, is she looking up like, oh, he's finally at peace and he is dead? Or is he flying? I don't know if I like the ending. Because is it still the point of view of Michael Keaton and he's imagining right before he's di he dies that he is flying and his daughter's looking up at him? No. It's confusing. Is he dead? Did he die on the stage? We'll never know. But... Is he just a psycho? I think he is. A lot of the carpets are the same ones as the ones from The Shining about a man who goes loopy. Are they? Yeah. Oh. Never noticed that. I did. That's why I have a degree in film. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one really knows the answer, but it's one of those films that just leaves it open-ended to the point where you can't get a more open-ended film. I yeah. Think. Well, did it annoy you because there were so many questions throughout the film and then it didn't answer it? Well, he's famous for le leaving plot threads unresolved, Alejandro. And I'm fine with that. I do that often when I'm writing and stuff because I've, I, you know, it, it's true to life in many respects, you know? Not everything's always resolved. I was just annoyed when she looked up. I just... <laughs> Would you rather... I'd rather it not... I'd, uh, I'd rather it have just ended with him shooting himself on the stage and ra rather than having the end in the hospital. But that's just me. I can, I can understand that. I mean, I love it, but that's just me as well. Mm. But I can, I can understand why you wouldn't enjoy that ending. I don't think a lot of people would. I think when it first came out, a lot of people didn't really understand it. It was too, like, different. I think it's the first kind of... Well, no. I don't know. Recently, it's like the only... When it first came out, it was, like, recently the only film that had done that in a while. Oh. That's been, like, really mainstream, I mm. think. Because it, well, it did get a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. Little, big time. He talks about Jackie's bum. What about Michael Keaton's... Tiny oh, white is. is. Tiny white is. Yeah, that was a great. That was a great sequence. Um, Where he gets locked he out. Gets locked out of the theatre. Theatre, and he's wearing a dressing gown. He gets caught in the door. Yeah, and he's. He has to take the dressing gown off and walk around New York. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, <laughs> that must have been fun to shoot. Yeah, he's acting in it. It's just. He's outstanding. Like you believe he's so embarrassed and just like kind of owns it. Yeah, it's 
And just <laughs> pretends <laughs> it's all normal that he's just yeah, walking, he's walking around. around New York in his tidy white is. And then he he's only got his wig and his gun on to oh, yeah. his prop gun. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes back into the theatre and finishes the scene. Um what I did that what my favourite piece actually, um the stuff with the critic. Oh yeah, we you know the um yeah. the female theatre critic. She was a fucking bitch. Yeah. I love the scene where he's like critic you become a critic when you can't become an actor. Yeah. That's true, and we're doing a podcast critiquing things. Great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was that was it was wonderful. And oh. she just looks like a bitch, doesn't yeah. she? All the acting's amazing. Yeah, it was Oh, how bad did you feel when Ed Norton just said it's wrote on a cocktail napkin? Oh yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah. Just destroyed Michael Keaton's character's thing. That he holds on to. I think it's a bit cringy, but I think every actor has a like a ritual before they go and do a performance. And Michael Keaton's character, he had this napkin with his was it his signature on it? Or it said there was a little epitaph and then a signature. Yeah, like saying how good he was. Yeah. And then he always used to look at that before his performances. Mm-hmm. And then Edward Norton's character just shits all over that by saying it's wrote on a cocktail. Napkin, the guy was drunk. I mean, you're like, oh, <laughs> poor man. Why do you have to do that to him? It's really harrowing in places. Just, you know, make me feel. And you can tell Edward Norton and the critic are friends, so she's always going to write yeah. a good review about Edward Norton's character. Yeah, yeah. Because he's of the theatre. He's not of yeah. the cinema world. It's very, like, political in... Yeah. The actor's realm. Yeah. Well, so there's this, there's one phrase that she says, like, you're a celebrity, not an actor or something. It's not yeah. exactly that phrase, but something like that. Hot stuff. A lot of people think that, though, don't they? Yeah. You know, Martin Scorsese says he don't like Marvel. Or dogs. But yeah, what about the scene I want to talk about? I know it's you reviewing it. The scene I wanted to talk about was when Michael Keaton's character tricks Edward Norton's character into believing that he got molested as a child because it's <laughs> it sounds weird but it's and that well talk, acted and you talk about Jackie Chan films this is done in a way oh is it now two actors this is fine, is it? <laughs> it's yeah, not fine this is fine <laughs> because Edward Norton's character's been such an ass to Michael Keaton he has to find a way to get through to him in the only way Edward Norton's character cares about and that's acting and he acts so because the whole thing is about Edward Norton's character having the same view as a critique saying that he's not an actor because there's that scene where he says many great actors have stood on this stage but you're not one of them yeah and then Michael Keaton's character does this monologue to Edward Norton's character saying that he got touched as a kid and that's why he's like not as confident and stuff. Is, is that it? when they punch each other? Yeah. I thought he was just talking... I didn't really listen to that bit then. Oh, man. I just thought he was talking about he couldn't get an hard on. No, Edward Norton was. And then... He says... I thought he was just giving him some brotherly love because Michael Keaton were getting on in his years. No. <laughs> he pins him off against the locker and he says... Right, I need to here, watch you. that piece then. You're giving me all this shit, but you don't know what I've been through. Right. And then he says all that, and then Edward Norton's character's like, "Sorry, man, I didn't, I didn't realise that." And I then, wondered why he got so angry. Yeah, and then we were just talking about Ardons. And then Michael Keaton says, "I was acting, you motherfucker." Yeah. And then we start doing a little like best friend kind of like yeah. awkward fight, rolling tumble and rolling about. But yeah, I can't believe he didn't. Come on, man. <laughs> my favourite scene in the film well, it's not mine clearly <laughs> but yeah have you got anything else that is me done in terms of Birdman it's out of 17 17 I'd give it 14.2 oh that's okay because they weren't talking about hard-ons I mean they were not for all the time <laughs> most of the film <laughs> Edward Norton's character arc is I can't get this woman pregnant because can't get an old one. Oh, and that's then, the um, random lesbian kiss as well. Yeah. That came out of nowhere. 
that happens. Actors are very weird. I oh, know, I know you. Like, very like touchy feely with each other, and I think that's probably a problem. But but it's I've fine. seen many just random kisses and tell us more stuff. Go into detail. I will when we get a fellow actor of mine. Paint on the pod. Paint a word picture, if you will. Um. A party full of. What was the lighting like? No, let's not. <laughs> but yeah, what we're music all... was playing. <laughs> we will discuss it later. Were you recording? In a later episode. <laughs> but yeah, fourteen out of it should have been seventeen out of seventeen. Thank you, Ryan. Get it uh, Mr. Point, Mr. Point, get it fourteen point two. Yeah, it's not high enough. Or eight. Fourteen point eight. That's high. Enough. We'll round it down to thirteen because you're being annoying. That's me. Yeah. I gave yours. Yours is a 15 now. Nope. You can't take yours back. <laughs> yours was a I didn't know this how, is mine. how this nice is you mine. was going to be. I like the film. I just won't buy it on Blu-ray. Well. You're wrong. And that brings us to, <laughs> to the end of our big pineapple of the episode. Um, let's do some wrestling. Let's. Right here, right now. Let's yeah. wrestle each other. Um, wrestling news. The big one. Should we do a big one? Yeah. Yeah. WWE announced a... Did they, is it officially announced? It's, an, or is it's it, a possible... It's a possible possibility that's possibly going to happen. Yes. In England. Big old pay-per-view. 2022. You've, you've got a, an inkling. Haven't you? SummerSlam. SummerSlam. 30, 30 years, years since Bulldog Brett at Wembley. You know, it, it's, old num it's old big numbers in 92. Yeah. I know it's 30 years since then and the numbers aren't as big. Great pay-per-view though. I love it. You would do. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if anything, it's going to be SummerSlam. Yeah. Unless they create a new shit pay-per-view Saudi Arabia style great balls of English fire great balls of Ryan oh <laughs> but yeah that's exciting it is I, I would really go I'd go to that I haven't really got anything else to say on that well unless UK fans are going to be excited yeah. I'm going to be excited you're going to be I'm excited now thinking about it good in my pants good white stain good <laughs> And we've got some AEW toys. Yes, it's, uh, well, it, well, currently still on. Oh, wait, what time is it in America? Yeah, it'll probably still be on. New York Toy Fair yeah. is this weekend. And AEW's first line of toys have been announced. Obviously. A little bit of a bubbly. You know, all the elite have got there out first. Oh, you know, the Young Bucks, Kenny. Cody. Cody. Um, Brandy, for Christ's sake. Has the dog got one? No, and uh, what are they playing now? Jericho as well. Jericho is the yeah. first first line. Uh, the second line has also been announced, and in that we've got MGF, we've got yeah. Dustin, um, Hangman Page, uh, the Lucha Bros, yeah, Pentagon and Phoenix, Jungle and, Boy, um, no, and um, Buddy, uh, Johnny Boy, John Moxley. Oh yeah, I forgot you even existed. Yeah. He's well, got an eye patch now, hasn't he? He does. Because he got stabbed in the eye. Stabbed in the eye. Not real stab. You know, K-Fabe. Oh, K-Fabe. He's dead. K-Fabe. He's dead. Uh, but yeah, they, they look really good, to be fair. Um, I'm not sure when they'll be getting released over here. I, yeah. think, I think they're getting released June, June, July time in America. Well, they'll come out. They'll be in stores. Some people will buy them. I'll probably get a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? I really like the Pentagon one. It looks awesome. The Pentagon is pretty cool. Yeah, it? it looks insanely good. And that's probably the only one actually. Yeah. I might get Jericho if it comes with a little champagne bottle. That'd be that'd be pretty good. Because obviously he's gonna come with a title. Obviously, yeah. He's the he's the champ, le champion. Le champion. <laughs> but yeah, they look really good. Um, I'm excited for him to get released and see which other ones they. Uh, in the future 
What do you want to talk about next? I mean, we've got that one, but I want to save that one till last because it's very aggressive. Yeah. Uh, well, the latest NXT takeover uh, was on at the weekend. Why did it take over? Portland. Portland. I believe. Not the school that I went to as a team, but the place in, in America. Oregon. Uh, I've only managed to catch the first two matches so far, but they were great. Who were they? Uh, Keith Lee versus Djokovic, man, <laughs> his name I can't say. <laughs> and uh, Tegan versus Dakota in a street fight. In a street fight? Yes, the first street fight in NXT. From really? What the commentators told me every 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. They were, you know, the, first, the opening was the men, and they were just two big boys hitting each other. Two big... Big boys. It were good. Do you like big boys? I like big boys. Mm. Mm. But no, it were, they were just, they did some crazy shit. Yeah. It was good. I'd recommend watching it. It was good. And the, then the street fight was really, really good. The other thing I didn't like was the ending, much like Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, a table was set up in the ring and um, Dakota was... Um, on the table and Tegan was on the top of the ropes she was gonna you know dive dive through but uh, a lady woman came out and uh, Who's that? gave her some powage um <laughs> the name is it, it was Raina Garcia originally but they've changed it to Raina something or Garcia something else I can't some Hispanic Latin sounding bullshit name uh, <laughs> you know and she came out and she sort of sort of choked slammed her off the top rope she was meant to go through the table, but the table didn't break in. It just looked like a nasty bump. Yeah. Um, that was the sort of only down point of the match. I, we don't know why she's done it yet. I don't think. Well, we might have found out on NXT actually, but I've not caught up with that. And um, Charlotte versus Rhea's formally being announced for WrestleMania. Yeah, you called it. I did. You fucking did. There's only one member of Undisputed Era with a belt now as well. Oh. I, I thought that they all were going to lose here. And, they, they, and then they be, debut on main roster. Yeah, pulled up. Um, but Who's, it's on Adam Cole's Adam only Cole. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, baby. It was the bros awaits Fishin O'Reilly. That's a really weird. Yeah, they were just tacked together, weren't they, for the Dusty Roads? Johnny, Johnny boy, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano healed it up again. Did it? He's healing against Tommaso now. Johnny wrestling. Mm hmm. Baby Kate. <laughs> well, that's the. I will watch the rest of it eventually. Um, I haven't bothered trying to keep up with Raw and SmackDown because it's just I atrocious. Yeah. I really should because we have a wrestling section. <laughs> yeah, but some of it's just Matt Hardy. Yeah. Um, getting randied. Randed. And you're just like, just leave Matt. Just do something else. I've been watching some of his YouTube videos and they are funny. Yeah. There's a there's one where he gets kicked into his swimming pool. Right. And he comes back out as like every other different Matt Hardy incarnation. Operation. Excellent. I'll have yeah. to watch that. The proper like because when he comes back as like version one. Yeah. yeah on SmackDown, it's like he's half ass in it, not yeah. wanting to do it. But this it's like oh nostalgia. But yeah. He's a crazy man, ain't he? Bless him. Oh, for sure. And he just wants to leave, and they won't let him leave. He'll go soon. We could talk about The Rock bringing his daughter to the Oh, Simone, Center. yes. She's officially signed um, with the PC. Yeah, there have been a lot of news about that, and quite a few videos about him. Like, yeah, because he, he, he went there and, and, and stuff, yes. It's his first time in the Performance Centre, I think. I said. believe so, yeah. And, yeah, he does all... All the wrestler comes back and gives a good old speech to all the young up and coming yeah. stars. I haven't watched any of it. I caught the first bit and got bored. Yeah, if I'm being honest. Was he like, "Can you smell what the rock is?" I mean, no, I only watched like ten thing. seconds. If I'm being honest, yeah, yeah that's. <laughs> I was just I was late at night. Fair enough. You know. But yeah, is she only there because she's? The Rock's yeah. daughter, probably. Yeah. She might be good, we don't know. Mm. As long as it's not another Charlotte Flair situation where she's run down the throats. She's going to be. She's yeah. going to be the most electrifying woman mm. in sports entertainment. The people's elbow. Mark Definitely. I'd, she's just going to be a carbon copy yeah. of The Rock. As long as she can do the eyebrow raise, that's all that matters. You know, The Rock eyebrow. She ain't got any eyebrows. Has she not? No. She's got stolen. Stolen. That's what I heard. Martin Scorsese kicked a dog. And the dog. 
bit her eyebrows off. Well, that's just idiotic, isn't it? That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. It's not believable. Not believable in any way, shape or form, Tony. Get to the stable. <laughs> Been a naughty pony. Mm. <laughs> well, the last bit of news. <sighs> Bellons. Hall of Fame inductees. No. We don't believe this should be a thing. And we believe whoever, maybe in about 50 years, whoever allowed this to happen should get castrated. Yeah. Because there's so many more worthy people. Go on, list them off. Molly Holly. Molly Holly. British Bulldog. British Bulldog. Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam Bigelow. Fucking, um... Christian. Christian. Chris Benoit. <laughs> I mean, he'll never get there, but he was a good wrestler. Just Dwayne. Dwayne. Taker. Kane. Big Show. Bam Bam Bigelow. You said Bam Bam I know, but I really want him in. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots. There's just many. Yushin Thunder Liger. He only wrestled one show in NXT, but... Is Batista in the Hall of Fame? Did he go no. in last year? No. No, I don't, I don't think so. Where's he going in this year? I know NWO are going in. Yeah. Weirdly. Macho Man. Randy. He's in it. Is he? I thought you weren't, because he... Conspiracies. Conspiracies. No, he finally, he finally got in, I believe. Oh, right. Though that is my favourite conspiracy of all time. Totally true. I believe it is. We'll discuss that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this is just a travesty to wrestling. Nikki it's... Bella and Brie Bella, the people who could just come back any day to wrestling, have just been introduced, well not yet, but are going to be introduced into the Hall of Fame. When... They have no talent. But yeah, it's just horrible. It's... I think it's just a slap in the face it's a mockery. for all it's a mockery. the people who actually deserve it. Molly Holly should be in there. You know I'm a big Molly Holly fan. Yeah, and she came back. And what, did she get nothing? She should be in it. Like, what have the Bellas actually done? One of them... Revolutionised the women's era. No, they didn't. A couple of nip slips. They're on Total Divas. <laughs> yeah, they've, point. they've got a wine company. Do they? Yeah, sell their own wine. Oh, it's a taste like. Probably shit. Tastes like regret. John Cena's weirdly obsessed with one of them. And one's married to Daniel Bryan. Another vegan. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, bottom line is... Because Stone Cold says so. They don't deserve anything. Yep. I mean, I don't wish death upon them. No, not that far. But yeah. if we're going to go into all of Fame, then I'd just reject it. If I was asked, if I were like Brie Bella, and I was asked to go into all of Fame, I'd be like, no way. There's a lot more people who deserve it, mate. It upsets me. Angers us. We've been very angry this episode. We have, and we do we do again apologise. Yeah, technically. We don't we didn't want it to be like this, you know? It was we had so much awesome banter this morning. And now we're just deflated, upset, hungry and angry at Brie Bella. Just Brie. Just Brie specifically, yes. I'd say Nick is more annoying to be fair. They're both annoying. Brie's well they're both no, they're both shit. Yeah. That's pretty much all I've got to say. That Let's uh, move on to our Awareness section. Mine's a tricky one. I was going to talk about Quaid and Bales because as many people have seen now the video that was posted of him explaining the troubles that he's had at school. The mum shouting that he basically wants to end his life and he's even there saying that he wants to take his own life and that he hates living. Uh, there's been some controversy around it. I haven't looked into it because it only happened recently. Um, that some people think it's an actor or something and if you go onto his Instagram he's got pictures with I don't know was it like girls and I'm not even 100% sure just stuff that makes it believe that he's a lot older than he says he is like regardless I'm not going to go into it because it's not being proven or anything it's like just, it's, nonsense. it's just is that controversy that it's all fake the things that he is saying in the video are like true for other kids educational facilities that just don't really know how to deal with mental illness and bullying and you know everyone's different i'm not saying every school or whatever just doesn't deal with it in a great way there are like i've done some work in schools and there are a lot more kids that are a lot more clued into mental health and they have mental health week every few weeks 
so there is some some really good stuff out there but the things that i said in that video about all this anti-bullying and it's obviously not working and stuff kind of I, some aspects of that i kind of find true because i have seen as well some teachers even bully the kids and in places i've not worked at some places that i have but it's workplace when you get people who are going to bully other adults it's like what are they going to do to the kids because kids are a lot more vulnerable and you feel like you can say anything to kids because they're not going to necessarily bite back at you and i think they're just an easier target for p bullies because there's bullies of all ages yeah. <clears throat> and i do think a lot more like i said last week it's still taboo even now i just think a lot more needs to be said and done uh i do think that some places don't really acknowledge the anti-bullying thing because i still see kids who are sat literally crying their eyes out on break or at a lesson and teachers don't know how to deal with it or people think they're weird for like crying or like the whole thing about mental illness the word mental gives off such a bad stigma stigma of it because kids just think oh he's mental like everyone's experienced that and yeah i just wanted to talk about him because when i saw the video it did break my heart like even if it does turn out to be fake like it's weirdly it is still kind of raising awareness about mm. it and i just don't believe it's fake because he was so emotional it seemed so real the emotion that was coming <clears> out of him and I think for people to turn around and say it is fake is just going backwards and finding a way to attack this kind of campaign that's trying to raise awareness about it. But yeah, I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. I mean, the whole fake aspect of it did throw me off a bit. But, you know, it's just that trying to raise awareness in schools and just talk to your kids after school. If they seem upset, don't attack them in the way that you're confused why they're upset just sit them down and talk to them because they might not want to talk to teachers i know i wouldn't want to talk to just a random yeah. teacher who i've seen kind of bully other kids anyway mm -hmm. like if they're experiencing that i'd want to talk in a safe place but yeah i'll hand it over to you because i feel like i've talked enough about it <laughs> well that's a good topic to talk about it's um a worthwhile topic um, well, it was um, Random Acts of Kindness Day uh, this week. People do Random Acts of Kindness for whoever, whether it be, you know, just helping a woman, elderly woman or man across the road or, you know, the famous thing that you see in films and stuff. Yeah. Or what have you, gifting someone something. Um, and I just want to highlight one that I uh, saw on Instagram. It was by uh, uh, Daisy Mae Cooper, who um, she's the sort of co-creator and star of the... BBC sitcom uh, This Life and uh, she posted about a uh, young girl who's uh, ill in hospital uh, called Hannah and she's um, got to be in isolation most of the time so she doesn't sort of get to interact with any of the other children on the ward and what have you so she asked kindly if people can like send cards or letters and stuff yeah. to a uh, um, P.O. Box and stuff and she got a shitload of stuff sent and it just sort of warmed me out a little bit you know and it's just nice to see that people do kind shit yeah you know um, I will post the P.O. Box on the description on, on the uh, you know social medias after, uh, when it, this goes to air uh, but if, if you'd like to send anything um, that would be a great cause just giving that person that little spark of happiness yeah that kids need you know life's a bit shit sometimes and something like this can even if it perks them up for a day yeah you know they're still perked up you know? yeah. yeah definitely well that's that's nice it's ending it on a nice note kind of calmed us all yeah it's all down from the news and from Uncharted and the Bellas and the technical difficulties oh don't even <laughs> don't even uh, well 
next week we have a good episode yes lined up we've got a renowned children's book author coming what, in what's it, what else is he going to be an author of other than books <laughs> <laughs> got me there but yeah a uh, award winning award winning children I can't I don't know children's that. book author <laughs> yeah <laughs> butchered that Jesus <laughs> an award winning award <laughs> An award-winning children's book author coming in to have a little chat with us. We're going to talk about a children's book film ad- adaptations, our favourite ones, and probably some not-so-good ones. Yeah, there's many of those. <laughs> and yeah, would be the same kind of schedule with the news and everything. Small pineapples, big pineapples, hairy pineapples, everything in between. But yeah, we won't we won't spoil who the guest is yet. We will be putting it on our social media where you can find us. It's at Wonder Hour on Twitter, and it's just Mr. Pineapples Wonder Hour everywhere else on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Instagram. So yeah, that has been the episode. Sorry, it's been a bit janky. Yes, but it should be fine next week. Definitely. We're just, we're just learning. Cut some slack. Oh, one thing we didn't mention. Seaton. <laughs> right? Fuck you. Yeah, bitch. I know where you live, son. Yeah, we a little... Yeah, Chris got knows bottom theme's better. Me, 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 me. We don't care what your opinions are. I mean, we do, because we'll talk shit about them, but, you know. Love you, Seaton. <laughs> <laughs> Stay fresh. Stay fresh. Take a ride on someone with a pony. Take a ride on someone with a pony. Please take a ride on someone with a pony. With Mr. Pineapple, oh yeah. It's Mr. Pineapple's Wonder Hour.